privilege this evening that I have to introduce the speaker for the evening. As I read over his um, vitae, his bio, and you all have it in your program, so you know, you know quite a bit about him, one of the things that struck me about this was his inability to retire. And I know there are a lot of you in this room who share that with him. You go from one job and then you retire and then you're so busy you get involved in another job. And then something else comes along and you get involved with that. And then all of a sudden, Rotary becomes the thing you retire to. And I know there are people here who are having that happen or have had that happen. And that's exactly what happened with our speaker this evening. On your, in your um, brochure, you have a little bit about him. But when we take a minute and look at what it is that he retired to, what has he done since he has you know, become a retired person who's now with Rotary? He's been district governor. Curriculum Chair for the Sun Sunshine Division, a discussion leader, a Chairman of Pets, uh, Rotary Coordinator for Zone 34, and on and on and on. And so that's what happens in Rotary. You don't ever retire. You just get more jobs to do. And so it's my great pleasure to introduce Art McQueen, our speaker from Florida. Thank you. I hope you want to do that when I'm done. Don't do it, but I hope you want to do it when I'm done. I don't do uh, lecterns, um, unless you get mad at me. It's a good place to hide. Um, I'm a little mobile. That's why Jim and I both wear tennis shoes. Jim, Jim's are a little brighter than mine. Um, and I don't give speeches. I'm going to ask you some questions, and I want some participation. And I'm going to share with you that Satya called me and we have shared the stage before. We, we met in Atlanta at a membership seminar in Atlanta. And I'm going to share with you that he called me up. He said, Art, can you come up and do our membership seminar 20, 25 minutes? And I started thinking to myself, and it's a great question to ask because there's a lot of past district governors up here. And I wondered if you make them different up here. Do any of your past district governors have the ability to speak that short? <laughs> it's, it's going to strain me. It's going to be a strain to try and do that. Um, you guys, are zone 32. Does everybody know what a zone is? Yes. Yeah. Most of you do. I'm in zone 34. Does everybody know what a rotary a rotary coordinator is? No. 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 You know what your district rotor or your regional rotary foundation chair is, right? Yeah. Makes sense because they they do foundation. You've probably got a regional Rotary Public Image Coordinator. Yep, see some heads bobbing up and down. A Rotary Coordinator does everything else for that zone, primarily with a focus on membership. So I get to go, in my case, that's the zone I am responsible for. It's Georgia, Florida, and all of the Caribbean. It's a tough assignment. <laughs> We only have 14 districts. I think you guys have 20 or 21 districts in your zone, but we have about the same number of Rotarians, 32,000 Rotarians, 782 clubs. Interesting, and you span some different countries as well with your zone. We have 26 countries in 10 different languages in our zone. And yet I can go anywhere and talk, and not just because there is quite a bit of English in the islands. But we're talking Rotary, and everybody understands. I was in doing a district assembly in Puerto Rico last year, and they broke their AGs into, into discussion panels. The woman who presented, they called on some of them to present, and she presented in Spanish. I have no idea what she said, and yet I was really excited. And I brought her up when I spoke. I followed that presentation. I brought her up, and I said, I have no idea what you said, but I had the hair, the very little hair I have, standing up because she had passion. She was all over. Rotary's Rotary, right? So that's our zone. I live in between St. Augustine and Daytona Beach, the Rotary Club of Flagler Beach. And we actually, it's great to see everybody in a jacket and tie. You wouldn't find this happen very often in Florida. 
Uh, my club, I often wear shorts and a t-shirt to my club. As a past district governor, sometimes I'm overdressed. We have people, it's a breakfast club. We meet at eight o'clock in the morning and some of our members show up, their hair is wet, they just got done surfing. <laughs> TED Talks, you guys know what TED Talks are? I do SAR Talks. Now are you really excited? <laughs> Semi-annual report. Strengthening clubs, attracting members, retaining members. A SAR Talk, that's membership, right? When you do a speech or a talk that's 20, 25 minutes, a lot of you are gonna check your phones, you're gonna lose focus, it's human. I was at a Pets last year and Brian King, who's the director of membership for Rotary International, was on stage, he was one of our presenters. He said the current focus, length of time a human being can focus is six seconds. <laughs> and then he followed that with the statement that a goldfish gives you seven seconds. <laughs> When I went to school, we were taught 17 seconds, and if you don't use voice inflection or movement or something, your audience will drip. But it was 17 seconds at that point. I prefer visuals. A lot of you folks get to the ocean quite a bit, I would assume. I spend an awful lot of time on the ocean, and I don't know if you've ever seen this. I shared this picture at a district assembly, told them I had taken it off the back of my boat. Someone hollered out, where's the four-way test? I said, I've been a salesman all my life. A few years later, I was back doing that assembly, and I brought it up again, and I said, you know, you called me on the carpet. I've got to come. I've got to be truthful with you. I took it off the back of my jet ski. <laughs> so, oh, oh, I got all kinds of things. What's Rotary? Anybody, what's Rotary? Service organization. Anybody disagree? It's okay to disagree. Anybody disagree? Nobody wants to disagree. If we're a circus, or, a circus organization, if we're a service organization, why are we any different from the Kiwanis, from the Lions, from the Elks? Are we? There isn't one of you in here that wouldn't argue we're different, right? Go ahead. We are the only organ organization with the seat, seat, permanent seat in the UN. We're the only organization with permanent seat in the UN. The American Red Cross, I think, still has one as well. A little different. No. Uh, they were part of the organization committee along with us when the UN was born. Absolutely correct. I like to view it a little bit different. You're going to disagree with me, some of you. We are an organization of members with a passion for service. I'm not gonna give you much different than you've heard from a bunch of folks that have spoke already tonight and it was great. The information they provided was great. In my line of thinking as well. I'm gonna frame it a little bit differently for you. Give you some thought. We are an organization of members with a passion for service. I think it's different and I keep doing that and I apologize. Many of you are business folks. Do you recognize that inverted pyramid organizational chart? Leadership on the bottom with the customers as the top of the heap, the top of the pyramid. I want to show you a rotary org chart as I see it. How many members we got? Jim already told you. 1.2 million, 35,000 clubs, and Jim's absolutely right. We've grown a couple thousand clubs in the last two years. 35,000 plus club presidents. The most fun and the most important job in Rotary, bar none. Thank you to those club presidents that stood up. I hope it wasn't because you missed a meeting. <laughs> 541 districts. Jim has 540 new best friends. 34 zones and 17 directors. Your director, Director Julia, is at a director's meeting right now in Evanston. My director, Director Robert Hall, is there as well. They have quarterly meetings. And of course, we have one RI president, and this year it's Rodney Rubin. Who's the customers in our organization? The world. The world? Anybody else? 
members. People we serve. Somebody said members. Yeah. Bingo. If I had something, I'd give it to you. <laughs> you heard the customers of Rotary. You heard Peter talking about making sure we listen to what's going on. We are the customers of our Rotary. If we lose our customer base, do we get to serve anybody? We don't get to help anybody. We're the customers of Rotary. I told you, some of you are going to disagree with me, and that's okay. I just want you to think. Why do people join Rotary? Give me some reasons. They're the same three on every survey we do. Why do people join Rotary? Service. Service. Business contact. That's number one. Networking. That's one of them. Fellowship. Fellowship. Top three in every survey we do. They're pretty equal. Networking trails a little bit. The first two are always right out there in the high thirds. Why do they stay? You've been talking about it a little bit. It was part of what Peter was saying. Why do people stay in Rotary? Same reason. Same reason. Except networking drops off. I'll share with you. I joined a club. I got invited to a club. I'm in sales. Always have been. I saw dollar signs. I saw 35 community shakers. What's the first question I asked when I got invited? Who else is a member? How many of you are members of board of directors of local nonprofits and other charities, other things? Anybody? Was that one of your questions when you were asked to join that board? Who else is on that board? It often is. It's a whistle. What's in it for me? It's human nature if you don't know anything about it, right? I joined to make money. Why does it drop off? I had a 35 member club. I joined a 35 member club. Why did I stay? Why did networking no longer become the reason I was there? Networked it to death. It's not a dang leads club, right? It doesn't change. We add members, we lose members. But the networking piece becomes just a tiny bit of why we're there. <laughs> or not at all. Right? I am that guy who joined the network and stayed to change the world. You've seen it. We use it. It's perfect. It, it, it impacts. I, I'll bet there's more people than that in here. We used to think the networking was a dirty word. It's not. Vocational service. Paul Harris didn't pick three other professions because he wanted to start a weird club. He wanted connections. He wanted to do business. It's why we have a classification system. It's not a dirty word. I sell communication software. And if you're not giving your members an opportunity to tell you what they do, you're missing an opportunity. Because if they're not into it, if they don't buy it, they're going to leave. We do have the highest lack of retention amongst that joint because of networking piece. Top two, still, oh, top two are still going to be service and the fellowship. All of a sudden, you got a new family. You love, literally, love the members in your club. If they need something, who do they turn to? Their club. And that's a good thing. I think, I don't know if it was Peter, but someone was talking about it, uh, was at a, a recent event, and said, oh, it was Satya. Satya said, if the only reason we should ever leave this organization is if we die. It's kind of funny, but it is one of the reasons we lose members. I mean, look around. We're kind of in that age bracket, right? <laughs> so we got a leaky bucket. We get members transferring in. We get members because we've got some great recruiters out there that bring new membership into our clubs. We lose some for that final relocation up to the big Rotary Club in the sky. Some transfer, some retire, and maybe they can't do it anymore. Some get a little too old to do it. They can't meet the attendance requirements anymore, and we don't think fast enough and make a rule of 85. We automatically turn them into honorary members. They fall off our rolls. They don't get the magazine anymore, and they're disconnected. 
For 100 bucks, they could be rule of 85. I'm saying 100, $53 to RI and whatever your, you know, your district membership fee is. About 100 bucks to be a Rotarian. People think it's expensive to be a Rotarian. It's expensive because we like to eat and consume adult beverages. <laughs> we only ask for $100 a member when it comes to foundation, right? So for $200 a year, do you guys, you guys have a sergeant at arms, I met him earlier, do you find people for their phones going off? Just a question. <laughs> planning, what about planning? We recently commissioned a, by we, I mean Rotary International, commissioned a 67,000 member customer survey about what they liked, what they didn't like, what they saw, lots of questions. Big firm, some great information. This was very interesting to me. The importance of planning, is it important for Rotary International to have a plan, strategic plan? Is it important for a club to have a strategic plan? Is it important for a district to have a strategic plan? And look at those, 96 or 97% of the respondents said yes. And yet, and RI has a great strategic plan, and you can copy it if you want to do it at a club level. It, to me, it's kind of a basis for a club level or a district plan. And yet, of our, whatever that number is now, what was it, uh, Jim, 440 districts now, 441? I'll bet you 100 of them don't have a strategic plan. Of our clubs, less than 50% have a plan. But we think it's important. Why don't we do it? Rhetorical. I don't know the answer on why. How do you lead without a plan? Anybody? Poorly. Sorry, couldn't hear it. Poorly. Poorly. <laughs> or you don't. I have to rely on some of my childhood, early adult, later adult, and still now heroes to give you an example. Mo had a plan every once in a while, but it was always bad, and they never got it done. <laughs> I've always looked at Rotary as a business. It's my training, it's my schooling, it's the only thing I know. <clears throat> I look at our clubs as franchises. We're franchises in a business world, like any other franchise. We have a master franchise holder, in this case 7910, that reports to that publicly traded company, if you will, the mothership, Rotary International. We have very few rules. Clubs are autonomous. When I was a governor, I told our clubs we had three things, they had three things they had to do, had to do, three and three only. They had to file their SAR, don't even have to do that anymore. They had to file their SAR, They'd pay their dues, and they had to send their president-elect to pets. I also told them that if anybody from leadership, including me, ever walked in and told them they had to do something else, throw my silly butt out. Because clubs are autonomous. Make it happen at the club level. Pace of change is too slow. Everybody wants to say that. Pace of change in Rotary as a whole is too slow. Pace of change in my district and or club is too slow, near 40%. How can that be? You drive that change. Make it happen. Do it. Jim was talking about corporate memberships. We got other programs going on too, right Jim? We got satellite clubs. We got alumni associations with more data available to us on alumni associations. We've got alternative meeting format clubs. We have all of these things available for you if you think you need to try it. And that's when you get Jim, Sacha, Peter involved and say, hey, maybe some, some one of these might work for us. Don't know, might. Membership. Number of Rotarians worldwide, somebody already gave this to us, right? 1.2 million. Number of Rotarians 10 years ago, anybody? 1.2 million. Trick question, how many Rotarians did we induct in the last 10 years? 
120,000. 200,000. 200,000. Million. 600,000. We're all over the board. 1.2 million. <laughs> Stay with my franchise analogy. You people, a lot of you, are business people. Before the advent and explosion of social media, how many new customers did a happy customer get you? Anybody? One. Maybe. If they were dissatisfied, how many people did they tell you never go there? Somebody said 16. It used to be 7 to 10 before social media. Gosh knows now, right? We got 1.2 million unhappy customers. I gave you three reasons people join. Does every club deliver all three? Can't. Every club cannot be all things. But you got someone that's interested in Rotary. So when you're vetting them, you're talking to them, you're interviewing them, you're doing your fireside chat, and they wanted your service. But your club has gotten older and it's evolved into a check writing club. You don't do too much on the ground service work anymore, but the breakfast club that meets on Tuesday does get them in a Rotary club. Because if you don't deliver what they want, they become part of that last 1.2 million thing. An unhappy customer. They make me more nervous than anything. We're great at attracting members, recruiting members. But we've got to give them a value, a reason to stay. And it varies from each and every one of us. I think it was Peter again talking about clubs and, and talking about listening to your members. Listen to your members. Let your members drive where you're going. Presidents sometimes make a mistake and they come up with a project for the year. It's in their head and their head only. Not too many people follow it. They might get some buy-in. But you need the whole club marching in sync, right? If you're going to do something like that. The good news this year, we grew 20,000 members. Of our, we have about, uh, I think it's 12 zones in Canada and uh, the states. Of those 12 zones, six group. And of those 12 zones, we only shrank 865 members in total, Canada and North America. Shrank 865, which out of 300 and some thousand is not too bad. We may be turning this ship around. Part of it's because of folks like Satya. It's because you're here. Thank you so much. A Wednesday night, taking your Wednesday night to be here to do this is commendable. Thank you. Our time is our most valuable asset. It's the only thing. We can give away our money. We can share our talent. We're all running out of time. And we don't get to barter. Don't get to trade it. Don't get to make any of it up. We make decisions with that time. Our clubs have to return on our investment in them. Simple question of your members. You had it to do all over again today. Would you join this club again? That's great that you can answer yes. You might have some that might say, yeah, I think about it. Honest conversation with your customers, determine why. Change. We had a club in our district, the president took over, they had been shrinking their 100 member club. And we do have. Districts are different every year. We have two clubs in our district that are over 250 members. Another three clubs that are all over 100. We have one club that was over 100. The president took over. They've been shrinking. Three, a simple three-question survey of his membership. What do you like? What do you dislike and never want to do again? What would you change? Acted on the responses to those three, and they grew. They're happier. They've grown three years in a row. Simple. So what's Rotary's product? I'm turning it into a business. What's Rotary's product? Service. 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 Keep in mind your customers. What's Rotary's product? What was Kodak's product? Kodak was one of our great American companies. What was its product? Film. Film. Anybody else? Memories. 
Memories was Kodak's product. They didn't realize it until it was too late. They tried to get into the digital world and their pricing was so high, they already had so much competition, they were done. Memories was their product. In my opinion, I agree with you 100%. They sold cameras and film. No question about it. That's how they made their money. They were also a great chemical company, so they tried to get in the chemical business because they needed chemicals to make their film. It didn't work. Memories. Rotary's product to me, and I learned this from one of my associate Rotary coordinators, member experiences. This is one tonight, right? You're going to walk away from here and you're going to say, ah, art was pretty nuts. Or you might walk away with a couple of takeaways, a couple of bullets, a couple of things you might be able to take back to your club. And that's going to be true of every one of us that speaks. And Jim said something great. I think it was Jim. It might have been Satya. We do these things often. It's no dang good if it stays in this room. Take it back to your club. Share it. Do it in a hurry. I've seen great speakers. A week from then, I forgot what they said. That's our brains, filled with stuff. <laughs> Too much stuff sometimes. Growing up, what'd you want to be? How many of you, uh, raise your hand if you want to be a policeman. Nobody? One, did you become a policeman? Nope. nope. Raise your hand if you want to be a doctor when you were a kid. Got a few, any doctors? You stayed a doctor. Not bad. Want to be a nurse? Did you become a nurse? Yeah. Wow, cool. Anybody want to be president when they were a kid? Nobody? I'm surprised. Usually it leads into a great question, did any of you become president? <laughs> when we were young, sorry? When we were young, and for many of us that meant we grew up in the 60s, we grew up in the 70s. As kids and then as we went off to school, we wanted to change the world. Things got in the way. Life gets in the way, right? For some, it was military service, it was a war. For some, it was a new spouse or a partner. For others, it was kids, finances. Things get in the way. I would argue and swear by the fact that we are, as Rotarians, what we always wanted to be. You folks, our customers, are the creme de la creme. And if you believe it, and you can share that with people, they'll join and they'll stay. Who do you think? I shared with you that I joined a club because I saw it as a networking opportunity. I was making a sales call with an office manager of a major plastic surgery facility. And we got know to know each other, like you often do. Sales is relationships. You make an awful lot of friends. And she said, you want to go to breakfast in the morning? My Rotary Club meets in the morning. Cha-ching, cha-ching. I saw dollar signs. I said, sure. Now I think Jackie Burroughs regularly, often, and publicly. She changed my life, and I had a good one. But she made my life that much better. Give someone a chance to thank you. Invite them to your club. Listen to why they want to be there. Invite a friend to our Rotary. I want to thank you for being Rotarians. Thank you. Thank you so much, Art. Thanks for coming all the way from there and giving us such a nice statistics, data, and information and inspiration. Let's give him another round of applause for what you have done.